Hi everybody, welcome back to Living Between Paychecks Kitchen. I'm Oz, that's Jack. It's time to get back into business. And we're doing this again. Now, well, this has been requested for a while. This is something my mom used to do. She'd make it in the morning. By the time we get home, we'd be cooked and be ready to go for dinner. So it's great, so we're gonna get into how to make a pot roast, which is slow cooking. So you're gonna need you like a crock pot or a slow cooker or something, right? And then we're gonna, before we get into it, be sure to like, share, subscribe to all the YouTube -y things, man, ring the bell for notifications, that kind of stuff. And let's get into this. So you're gonna need pot roast, like, you know, four to five pound man this one shout out to the people who threw it to me uh you're gonna need some potatoes carrots onions we got some frozen ones or you can use a full one whatever we got some celery gonna throw in here and instead of using water i like using beef broth instead just tastes better and then you can get this tender pot roast slow cooker season mix or you can find an onion soup mix if you can find it anywhere if you can find it now Good this luck. one it's it's big it's got a bone in it so it's hard to cut down the middle so we're gonna kind of do it diagonally then you want to salt pepper it now and then you get a skillet and you brown the outside of it first try not to right? use your meat hand to touch the salt and pepper right well the salt and pepper shaker needed to be cleaned anyway it's been a while be sure to disinfect <laughs> afterwards yeah disinfect everything all the time so get you a big skillet get it turned up and well as big as your pot roast is you can do a little one whatever so get it in there you're gonna let it brown for two or three minutes on either side just to get it started i don't know why but that's what we always thought now wash all your vegetables and then cut them into sizable chunks that you're willing to eat and right? so if you want them smaller to a smaller if you want a big just throw in the whole onion whatever makes you happy jesus who would throw a whole onion in a I crock pot no idea. throw out the trump toast <laughs> and then cut the rest of the carrot down now when you get to the <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say what Trump that thing is, but just go ahead and cut those things out, and then your potatoes, same thing. Like if you like big chunks of them, do big chunks. If you want the small ones, do the small ones. I've seen some people that do just the whole red potatoes that are small. If you want to peel them, peel them. If you want to leave the skin on, leave the skin on. You know, it's up to you. I always just leave it in there. Now, take this big hunk of meat and flip it over. Like I said, it doesn't have to be completely brown. Just that it's starting to cook. You got a lid on it. It really helps. Like I said, two, three minutes per side. It's a nice and soft, ready to go, and easy to cut. So get that pulled out. We took it, just cut it. We did a diagonal across that bone. <laughs> it actually worked out pretty well. Right? And it fits really well. Now, you got a cup and a half of the broth, and you put your seasoning stuff in another bowl and mix it separately. You want to mix it up there, because if you do it in a thing, it might come out and be like horribly lumpy, or you could just have balls of powder that cook into a ball at the end. So it takes a little while. Start so just out, keep please. whisking. Whisk, 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 whisk. <laughs> it Much takes a little later. while. My hand gets cramped up. So you're going to need a crock pot, like one of these big slow cookers, right? I don't know where they call them elsewhere, but this crock pot. Make sure it's nice and clean, get it up, and make sure your meat fits. Or just push until you hear breaking glass. It'll go. <laughs> Now, you're going to have to move that around and get some vegetables underneath it because you don't want that big open spot. Down. Put vegetables so in first. Well, then the meat might not fit. So I want to make sure. Like, sure if there was down to the two of them, I would take the vegetables out and make room for the meat. I'm not going to just not cook meat because I want to make sure all my vegetables get cooked. And then put that seasoning right on top. Make sure you get all that out of there. Now, if you don't think that's enough or you want it, you know, a little more moist, I always worry about it. So you put it in there. So it's either going to be four or eight hours. If you're going to put it on low, do it for eight hours. If you're going to do it on high, do it for four hours. And you can see it's cooked. It is absolutely delicious, right? This stuff is outstanding. It is really filling. And you can turn it on, put it on low, leave as long as you trust your electrical matters at your house. <laughs> but this feeds four to six easily. Bunch of food, bunch of vegetables. Tastes outstanding. Again, shout out to Linda and Suzanne who gave us that roast so we could use it here. This absolute excellent piece of meat. Love this recipe, man. Grew up on this. Loved it. So there you have it. Pot roast, man. That's enough to feed a family six to eight easily. It's outstanding. It smells great. If you do anything different and you'd like to try this or get us to try something different, man, just put it down in the comments. We'll check in on it and we might try it that way. Until then, you can catch us here on YouTube. Monday through Friday. I guess you can find us on the weekends if you really want to. But we update on Tuesdays and Fridays. You can also find us on Instagram at Living Between or on Facebook, Pinterest, or Patreon if you want to help us out. We very much appreciate it. You can find us there at Living Between Paychecks Kitchen. And we'll see you next time.